you've got had quite a journey with councillor first and yes. then mayor. Yes. Kicking off as a councillor, why in the heck did you want to put your hand up to become a councillor? It was a transition time for me. It was we were just closing and selling an orchard on the Waimea Plains, <clears throat> and I thought, now what am I going to do? And it was election year and one of the people at council said have you thought of have you considered standing for council and I thought well no I hadn't I that's a good idea I will and I thought because I was living I'm in the Richmond ward oh we were and um, I thought no one will probably vote for me but they did and so I became one of the three Richmond councillors and then I found that it really suited me very well because my driver has always been uh, helping people and working for our community and uh, so that suited well we had a Richmond pool that was had been decided to be built and there was a lot of fundraising I'd had reservations about that people answered my questions and then asked me to be the chair of the fundraising committee so I did that and thoroughly enjoyed it and I have enjoyed ever since working with and helping the council so it's, you, you enjoy the interaction with people? It's a, it's I a enjoy people the focus. interaction with people. It is the people focus. There are so many different people with different needs. And whether you're a councillor or mayor, you've got a lot of ability to help connect people to those that can help them. Mm, it's making connections. Yep. Because I think there's a, a perception from a lot of people that's politics. Yep. Because it's called local body government. Yep. Or local government, yeah. But does politi is politics a part of it, particularly in Tasman, or or is it a, a, a more um, a, a wider view than politics? Well, I guess you've got politics in everything. You, in work, you've got workplace politics, you've got national politics, you've got local politics. So certainly, it's politics, which is basically representing people. So they vote for you, and you come in. And with council, with all of the issues that council has to make decisions on, you're there to make decisions in the best interests of the community. So that's politics and it's local politics. Mm, mm. It's because we don't have party, we're not so no, party politics. I, I think that's the reality and it's something I've noticed always that the um, rural councils like ours tend to be apolitical, not national politics. Uh, we've got local politics, but we we tend to be independent, and that's what most people are, as far as I'm aware, on council. Uh, certainly, when you get to the metros, it's much more common to have a national and a Labour and probably a Green grouping. But certainly here in the local politics and in Tasman, I think most people are independent, so they're just there to make the best interests, the best decision for the community. Now you did. Two terms as a councillor. Two terms as councillor and, and then four as mayor. Yeah, what triggered the, I might have a go for the top job thought? Um, I actually thought at the time it could be time for a change, that um, it could be that there was a different type of leadership needed, which is why I put my hand up. And I, in a way I didn't want to because John Hurley was the mayor and I respected him and still do. Um, but I actually thought that there could be a difference and so I put my hand up. And it was successful. And it was successful. That was yeah. it. And you carried on through yep. through the um, the terms through four election cycles. Each each cycle, I would never thought, oh yes, I'll get back in. Um, you never know what's going to happen when the vote is counted. But I was successful for four terms. Mm. Ste stepping back now, as as an overview, was it? Would you call it enjoyable, or was it a learning process? What, no, it was enjoyable. It? <clears throat> Probably the learning process was the first term of council. Uh, the, the second term, I learnt the ropes as a councillor a bit, and then I thought actually the transition to mayor will be quite straightforward, and it wasn't at all. Uh, it was a huge step up, and there, what I hadn't realised is how many issues are coming and things to be dealt with from all directions all of the time uh, and so that was a, a real learning experience and that part of that learning was not taking things on board too much personally and getting swamped. Yeah, it could be quite over overwhelming. It can be. And speaking of overwhelming, that first day you sat down in the chamber for your first real meeting. I mean, you do an induction, I understand that, and they guide you through, this is probably going to happen and this might happen. But you sit down, the rubber hits the road. Can you remember that first day? How was that? 
no, I can't remember either first day, either first as councillor or first as mayor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> I've probably blotted them both out. I can remember actually when I became a councillor how many acronyms there are and people that have been there before, they understand a whole lot. One of the things I came to realise at the end of my term as mayor is how much you know about how many different issues all through the district. Uh, and it's not a huge amount of detail, but you get a, a once over likely of a lot of things going on. Tasman's quite unique too, being a unitary authority. I mean, we're two councils in one. Yep, we aren't are. Aren't we? Yep. How does that work? I mean, for, for someone new coming to the job thinking, I might put my hand up to be a councillor, is there twice the workload? Is there, uh, how different is it? Well, I think the, the way I would summarise it is it's just different. Um, if as a mayor of a unitary I used to go along to the regional council um, regional sector meetings where most of the people were chairs of regional councils and we were always seen as different and we are different because the reality is that in the unitaries you're dealing with so much more than just the regional council matters when you're in a unitary you it's, Tasman had always been a unitary since when I became interested in it. So it was just what I knew. I didn't know regional and territorial authority. So it, it's just you just basically have to get used to all of the different functions the council has, what you have to deal with, decision making, environmental, social, all of the different things. One of the the realities that I think anybody standing needs to know is how much impact central government decision making have on local government. Government makes a lot of decisions for that, that local government have to uh, implement and it's really a very tough gig because I think often central government don't think about what the impacts are of the people that are having to implement it and local councils. If, uh, frustration for mine is always that there should be a better working relationship between central and local and often central it's, it's got its mind on other things and it does it's not a very good partner to me but that's the way it is it's the system we've got uh, and that's what you have to do within local government you've got to live with it you've you got to live with it. it no that's right yeah. your advice to someone who's thinking yeah oh, this is my this could be my gig <clears throat> What would Richard Kempthorne first, the councillor, say to that person? Um, I would say, just think about, are you there? And for, Because when, on the first day of council, the first council meeting, everybody takes the uh, oath or affirmation, which says that you're going to work in the best interests of the Tasman District. So if you're a Richmond Ward councillor or a Golden Bay Ward councillor, your oath that you're taking on the first day is that you're going to work in the best interests of the whole district. And that takes a bit to get your head around because often people stand in wards, so the mayor is right across, so they're, they're thinking that anyway. But in the, in the wards, um, people are thinking, right, in Golden Bay, I'm going to stand up for this or that or the other for Golden Bay. And that's fine. It's actually a highly valid for the Golden Bay Councillor to reflect the interests of their community but when it comes to debating and voting they should be operating in the best interests of the whole district. That can be a real challenge because sometimes the whole district interest is actually not the same as your ward. So you then got to theoretically make the right decision for the district and then explain in your ward why you haven't actually done what they wanted. Whew, there's a lot to take in, isn't there? There is. It's, it's it's a it's a big job. Yes, it is. And yeah, um, and I don't think it's a job for everyone. It's not a job for everybody. You have to be able to put up with that certain amount of bureaucratic process. So if you're a, if you're an effective businessman who likes to make decisions quickly, it's probably not for you. If you're an impatient person and can't tolerate processes, it's not for you. But if you're there for the overall interest of the of the region and the district and you're happy to put up with those processes then it's actually can be very rewarding fulfilling fulfilling so as in your term i mean you you were there i mean a long time as as 
it has, it was grown actually. Yep. Actually, as a council, it's grown because it was the big yep. changes back in the eighty nine when it that's right when it all kicked off. Yeah. What are your achievements that you've ticked off and you've sit, sat back and thought, "Wow, we did that. That was cool." Or maybe we could do this. Um, probably. Off, we did well, it. one of the one of the good, wonderful things to be involved with was the Richmond Pool fundraising because we had to raise one and a half million dollars, which back in uh, 2001 was a lot of money. It still is today, but we had to raise 1.5 million. That was very significant, very rewarding to see that facility. It's been very rewarding to see those facilities throughout the district, the rec centre in Golden Bay, uh, the um, the in Motueka, the rec centre there, the rec centre and community centre in Upper Mootry, in uh, St Arnold and Murchison. They're great facilities for the community and it's, they're great assets. But I think overall it's not a lot of specific things, uh, but just generally what the council does. I have got such a high regard for what for the work of the council and what the council achieves because of all of the different things. The last thing that was for me the most important thing ever to be involved with and by far the most difficult was making the decision to build the dam. Since we've made that decision unfortunately there have been budget um, blowouts and that is that has unfortunately been the reality they weren't expected but that's happened and again it's a reality of actually doing some of the things that are really important so I think the uh, for me it's actually trying to what I tried to always do is what is the right decision for our region and then once I've got that making that I feel happy myself even if it is an unpopular decision for someone uh, again going back to the to, to the newbie someone who's going to put their hand up what research should you do before you launch into <clears throat> a potential campaign is there anything you would suggest should people come to meetings should they read agendas what or go out and talk to people what's the feeling well my suggestion would be to talk to somebody who has been on council and is now not and ask them ask all your questions for someone who you know and trust and just talk through what's involved. They could also go onto the website, council website, and look at meeting agendas and just see the topics. What what are the things being discussed? Because that is going to pretty much reflect what's going to be discussed going forward. So you'd need to do that for several months and you wouldn't need to read the reports, just read the topics and say, oh, council does this, this, this and this. Those would be the two things. The other thing they could do is phone council, speak to a staff member and say, I'd like to talk to someone about what's involved in being either a councillor or mayor. Can you just give me a heads up? And I think that's where our electoral officer is, is perfect yep. for that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great. Is there anything else? That well, the, the, the one other that? thing is, as far as whether it's a councillor or a mayor, what you're, what the community is wanting is people who live here, work here, feel and think here in the region and the, the people who have confidence and can trust that person rather than somebody who uh, is trying to feather their own nest or do something to suit themselves personally. You're looking for someone who's going to be honest and open and trustworthy and work for everybody.